What if the future of warfare wasn't fought with soldiers, but with software? Buried deep inside Israel's top intelligence unit, one colonel built a system powered by AI, designed not just to analyze threats, but to decide what happens next. First came Lavender, the algorithm that ranked people, then Gospel, the one that tracked them to places. Two algorithms that changed the rules of war, scanning patterns, predicting moves faster than any human could. But when the two machines start making decisions at the speed of code, where does the human judgment fit in? This is the true story of Colonel Yao and the moment AI crossed into the battlefield. In a sealed chamber inside Unit 8200, the most secretive and elite signals intelligence division of the Israeli Defense Forces, a quiet revolution in warfare is unfolding. Not with rifles, not with jets, but with code. His name is Yalv, a colonel with a background in both computer science and battlefield command in the high-tech corridors of Tel Aviv. Some whispered he was Israel's Alan Turing, brilliant, driven, and dangerous in how fast he moved. Others called him the architect. This is a story of how Yao's algorithms decide life and death, how he created Lavender and the Gospel, two AI systems that transformed counterterrorism into a problemistic machine, and how he may have unleashed a form of automated warfare that even he struggled to control. In the words of Brigadier General YS, author of the Human Machine Team, AI doesn't sleep, panic, or mourn. That's why we win, but it's also why we must stay in control. And that's where Yao's story begins. Yalv's obsession didn't start with war, it started with scale. He believed the problem with intelligence wasn't capability, it was volume. He was Unit 8200's philosopher of code, crafting the AI doctrine that Yalv would bring to life. As Sarrell put it, the human mind cannot sift through the data flood, but paired with machine learning, new forms of cognition, supercognition became possible. Yalv envisioned a future guided by what Sarrell called the fast framework. Foundations, acceleration, and singularity time. Foundations meant organizing and structuring data in new interoperable ways. Acceleration meant focusing on key capabilities like anomaly detection that could help rapidly deploy. Singularity time, imagining tools that didn't just help humans make decisions, but the anticipated risks before they surfaced. It was philosophy that Yalv brought to the Unit 8200. Supercognition became possible. He would often repeat this to his team, terror hides and noise, phone metadata, movement patterns, sim swaps, call trees. No analyst can track them all, but an algorithm can. Unit 8200 was already drowning in data, signals from Gaza, calls from the East Jerusalem, satellite drifts, drones humming above. They needed a filter, a funnel, a mind that wouldn't blink. Yao proposed something radical. Teach machines to do what analysts do, not just detect, but decide. The first prototype was codenamed Lavender. It wasn't a weapon, it was a ranking engine. An inferential system based on Serral's principles of positive unlabeled learning, a way to find hidden threats in plain sight. Lavender didn't look like much, just a cluster of servers in a locked room, but inside it ran one of the most aggressive machine learning models ever built in the history of modern warfare. The system trained itself on data from known militants, cell tower pings, travel logs, call records, telegram contacts, even the cadence of speech, intercepted audio. It created profiles, matched patterns, and used neural networks to learn associations no human would catch. Serral called this approach deep defense, using AI not to just react, but to discover threats hidden beneath the surface. Invisible to traditional methods, Lavender made predictions, probabilities, confidence scores, and soon it started to generate names, tens of thousands of them. Yao reassured his analysts, we're not just flagging people as guilty, we're rankling likelihoods. You know, the humans. You decide what to do with that. But under pressure, the human layer thinned, strike windows were tight, mission load increased, and Lavender's rankings became gospel. Sarah warned, human oversight must not be outsourced. AI must remain a teammate, not a judge, but the system was scaling faster than any doctrine could keep up with. If Lavender found the people, the gospel found the places. The system was an operational co-pilot, just as Sarah envisioned in his plan of action section where AI augments decision makers by servicing new interpretations of battlefield data. It ingested drone video, satellite snapshots, heat signatures, and motion tracking. It analyzed building entrances, parking patterns, nighttime activity, and learned not just to see, but to anticipate. This second system was visual. Commanders in the war room began to rely on Gospel's output for more than traditional intel briefings. One officer described the transformation. We went from maybe 10 verified targets a day to 100. We call it divine efficiency. Sarah wrote one of these systems that function as strategic co-pilots, building an AI assistant for every analyst. But with the scale came danger. As Yalv cautioned in his internal meetings, 
It's not what we can strike, it's what we shouldn't. On the battlefield, AI met hardware. Blavender's predictions were fed into drone strike systems. The gospel provided visual confirmation. Drones, some loitering above targets, often launched from mobile units, would finalize what begins as code. A technician recalled the process. Target confirmed by Lavender. Gospel shows movement. We pass it to the drone operator. And the operator? It's simple. We see a name, a pattern, a house. If it all checks out, we hit it. Sometimes the match was perfect. Sometimes a child borrowed a father's phone. Sometimes a cousin drove the wrong car. The system marked it acceptable. Sarah warned, a machine can't understand the context. It doesn't feel the ethics. It doesn't mourn. But Yalv did. He started noticing patterns the system ignored, and the doubt began to grow. Yalv began keeping a notebook, handwritten, no backups. In it, he logged the strikes he questioned, the predictions he overruled, the ones he didn't. Sarah warned of this moment. When decisions once made by teams became a silent output of AI rankings, Yalv wrestled with it daily. The system works, he wrote, but at what cost? Lavender is precise, gospel is tireless, but morality wasn't part of the model. The war room remained a hum of terminals and efficiency, but inside Yalv's mind, the noise was deafening. He realized the most dangerous thing wasn't faulty code. It was the perfect logic executed too fast. Later, when whistleblowers emerged, they described an assembly line. Lavender flagged, gospel confirmed, analyst approved, sometimes blindly. One anonymous analyst admitted, sometimes we didn't even open the file. We just clicked yes, there were too many. And in that moment, Yao's vision of synergy of the human machine team collapsed. Cyril had warned, without deliberate leadership, AI doesn't elevate humanity, it erases it. And in 2024, Yao resigned. There's no ceremony and no press release. He vanished from the command structure. His name scrubbed from internal systems. As Cyril noted in his reflections on paradigm shifts, those who lead transformations often carry the burden of their consequences and Yao had fulfilled the promise of synergy between human and machine. They also had seen what it cost. But the algorithms remained. Lavender still scans, gospel still watches, drones still fly, and somewhere in a sealed archive, Yao's notebook sits. A record of one man's attempt to bring order to war and the chaos he accidentally unleashed. In the age of AI, war is no longer fought just by soldiers. Sometimes the battlefield is a database. The weapon is probability. And the trigger, it's just a line of code.